A modern version of the back row premium format has crashed through the window of the Seeker Sanctuary and broke my damn window. What's up with that, Babs? Well guys, SciShow did it to me again. <laughs> These variants, I swear to God, I can't resist. I don't know what the deal is. I did not buy that girl when she originally came out. I wasn't sure I liked the light gray with the black accents. Um, it wasn't really the color combination that worked for me. Uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted a big sweeping fabric cape or not. Um, but man, that piece sold out. Regular edition is gone, exclusive is gone, and then here we are at Sideshow Con, and with no warning whatsoever, we get this limitation of 150 variant of the back row premium format, and it's pretty darn cool. I'm pretty happy with it. It just, actually it came several days ago, but I was out of town, so I had to wait until today to crack her open. So let's take a look. So for those of you not familiar with the concept of this piece, she's flying down or coming down from a rooftop, crashing through the circular window of a warehouse and throwing down some smoke bombs to disguise her entrance and confuse the bad guys. So this smoke base you see is from the smoke bombs that she's thrown down as she crashes through the window. That's kind of a cool design. I think that's very clever and it's done really effectively. Now, one result of that is um, this isn't really a low shelf statue. Um, I would actually place her high so it looks like she's, you know, swooping down on you. Um, even head on, you don't see the portrait as well as you do from below. That's the, I think, ideal angle. To view the portrait and actually the whole piece because it really does look like she's crashing down towards you which is a really nice effect very dynamic so the differences between this and the original release is that we have a charcoal gray bodysuit instead of that light gray we had before and the elements that were black before including her gloves the insignia on her chest and her boots, uh, they were black, now they're gold. And the gold is, I think, a really nice change because you're able to see the detail of the sculpt so much better. I think a lot of that detail was invisible when it was black, but it just shines uh, in this gold color. It's really, really nice. It really pops. The utility belt, I think, is the same. I think we had a gold utility belt with the other edition and these kind of, uh, I don't know, aged leather maybe or canvas pieces all around. So I don't think that changed at all. But the gloves, the boots, and the bat insignia are all gold now and it really, really works. The base, I believe, is the same. I read someone saying that the base color had changed, but I don't think that's the case. It appears the same to me. But boy, does that look like wood, doesn't it? And it has the texture of wood. It feels like it, but all polystone. They did a great job with that. I mean, look at the difference in texture between this crashed window frame and the smoke. I mean, that's really awesome. She's got this upswept hair, which uh, raises her height to 20.5 inches. And when this was first uh, shown uh, on the, the uh, Sideshow website, some collectors were saying, why is her cowl and cape blue if her bodysuit is gray, charcoal gray? Well, you know, look back at the old comics. I mean, I know this is called the modern version, but it's the same is true when she was first introduced uh, back in Detective Comics 359. She had what really was kind of a black suit, but her cowl and cape were blue. So that is very true to form. 
even with the original costume. And to be honest, that's one of the reasons I bought this, not because it's the modern Batgirl, but because it's really the classic Batgirl. Close to it anyway. I know that, you know, if you look at the cover of Detective 359, the bodysuit is black. But if you look in further issues, um, or later issues, I should say, it kind of goes to gray. So this charcoal gray really, really works. Um, I kind of wish Sideshow would get away from this idea of tucking the cape underneath the portrait. It's a real pain uh, to get that right and get that in a way that you don't feel like the portrait is too loose, that you're losing some of the magnetism. Um, they did a fairly good job of demonstrating how to do it in their unboxing video, but it took me several minutes of kind of, you know, futzing with it to get it to a point where I wasn't nervous about the portrait just falling off. So, you know, I'm not sure what the solution is, but uh, boy, oh boy, I, I remember having the same problem with the original Batgirl premium format, where you also uh, tucked that cape underneath the portrait. Which, by the way, that uh, original first Batgirl premium format, that was my first quarter scale statue. So that's when I really entered uh, the statue collecting hobby. I had some one six pieces that I had just picked up because they looked cool on the counter in my comic shop but I never considered myself a statue collector until I bought that uh, Batgirl premium format and then the floodgates opened. I really like the portrait. It's determined. And while Sideshow has recently gone in a direction of kind of sexualizing their female characters, especially the Batman characters, um, I'm talking about, I don't have the lights on down there, but you know, Harley, Catwoman, Ivy, they're pretty heavily sexualized in these poses. And obviously I don't mind that because I bought them. But Batgirl, we have a more traditional, highly dynamic action pose, which I think will be, I don't know, I think it'll work really well in my collection. I think what I'm going to do is move Poison Ivy up between Scarecrow and Mr. Freeze. There's just enough room. I had her there before. And then um, I'll, I might try Batgirl down here between Harley and, and uh, Catwoman. I know that's contrary to what I just said about wanting her on a high shelf, but the fact is I'm going to be viewing that shelf from sitting on my couch. <laughs> So um, it won't be low to me. It'll be either even or maybe a little bit higher than where I'll be sitting while I watch TV at night. Anyway, I'll try it there. If it doesn't work there, then I'll have to find a higher place for her. I'll give you some close-ups of the base. I didn't really understand when the, this originally came out uh, where the smoke was coming from. But uh, now that I see that she's thrown down smoke bombs, it totally makes sense. Really awesome job on the broken window. Lots of detail there. And excellent paint. You know, they didn't just, they didn't get lazy with the paint. There's a lot of different colors in there. The glass looks like glass and there's dirt on it. it, it's very effective. You imagine this is just kind of an old abandoned warehouse where uh, some bad guys are pulled up and she's going in to, to get them. Really, really nice. It's a great portrait. So since this is the variant, um, this is the, usually the way, the way Sideshow does it, you don't get the exclusive portrait from the original release. You just get the collector's edition portrait. Now, in at least one case, we had a completely different portrait, and that was with Psylocke, where we got the original portrait that wasn't released. Uh, we got, but we did get her with the variant, so that was different. But in the case of Batgirl and Daredevil, um, 
Well, actually, Daredevil was really weird. Daredevil, they mixed the two portraits from the original release in the variant. So I guess they do change it up. But those are my variants now. I've got Batgirl, I've got Psylocke, I've got the Shadowlands Daredevil, and the black costume Elektra. So, Sideshow always gets me with the variants. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, the cape, I haven't worked at it very much. This is kind of out of the box. And I think it looks okay. Um, I might work on it a little bit, but it's quite wide. I haven't measured it, but I would guess maybe 17 to 18 inches in diameter. If you're going to have it fully extended like this, you know, you, you certainly have the ability to uh, change it up into whatever shape you like. One thing I do like about the fully extended look is that it's kind of in the shape of a bat, which makes a lot of sense. You've got this uh, faux leather on the outside of the cape, which looks nice. And then more of a satiny material on the inside. Give you some different views here. Oh, and of course she's got a grapple gun strap, strapped to her thigh. That looks cool. It's a nice profile. So I'm increasingly uh, getting more and more Batman pieces in my collection. Um, I've got Scarecrow, I've got Freeze, I've got Harley, I've got Catwoman, I've got Poison Ivy, and then of course I've got Batman, and now Batgirl. So it's creating <laughs> some difficulty as far as uh, space in my collection. And I don't have them all together at the moment. I've got some of the rogues up here, some of the rogues down here. And then Batman is with my Justice League collection here. So I might have to switch it up and find a way to get them all together. But I think she's a winner. It's nice to have a dynamic piece when Sideshow has been putting out quite a few museum pieces lately. So I think it's a It'll be, it'll bring some electricity to my collection, let me put it that way. Really nice. Let's take a quick look at the art box, which you'll notice is identical to the original version. They didn't even change the colors on the picture of Batgirl. This is the original light gray with the black accents instead of the modern colors. Uh, the only thing they added was this badge on the bottom that says Batgirl modern version. Otherwise the box is identical to what you saw with the original release. Really colorful. I like it quite a bit. Looks really good. And then it says Batgirl on the top. And I got number 116 out of 150. So I do recommend this piece, but it's gonna be hard to find. Uh, the edition size, like I said, was only 150. It's sold out in about two hours. Uh, so she's now waitlisted. You can jump on that waitlist, but with an edition size of 150, um, I don't think there's going to be too many conversions, but it certainly doesn't hurt to try. It's free to jump on a waitlist, so you might as well give it a try. The original version, the lighter gray with the black highlights, it's all gone. Collector's edition exclusive, both sold out. They're not even on a waitlist, they're sold out. So it's already difficult to find. I saw one guy's already thrown it up on eBay for more than double what he paid for it. Um, I don't know. People do what they do. So if you want the piece, good luck. I hope you can find one. Um, it is worth having, especially if you have a lot of Batman pieces in your collection. She's going to fit in really well. I think she's really going to look nice. Um, that's all I got for tonight, guys. I'll be back very soon at Rose Gallery Live, and um, I don't have anything coming really soon. I'm thinking about the Deadpool. You know, it's not getting a lot of attention, but that Deadpool by uh, Guillermo Barbiero, that's a great sculpt. 
a lot of people wish that his um, that the Vespa was a different color than his costume. It's, they think it's too much red, but it's correct. I mean, his Vespa is red in the movie and in the comics. But that sculpt is really good, especially the the side profile of him with the one foot on the seat of the Vespa. And it looks really good. So I'm thinking about that one. Um, and that's supposed to ship this month in August. So we'll see. I might get that one. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you soon on Statue Forum. I'll see you on Facebook. And conventions are back. So I might see you at a convention near you. Take care, guys. Good night.